Woke up this morning, think I'm about to go some of the day. Best friend got caught up when I stayed in Douglasville. What's good, y'all? Welcome back to another video. So today, we going to react to Zendaya's song and Labyrinth and Zendaya all for us from HBO Euphoria. It's coming out this weekend, baby. Coming out tomorrow at 12. Let's go. Let's get into it. Y'all be sure to like, subscribe. Shout out to Zendaya. That's one of my crushes um, when I was younger. Shake it up. <clears throat> hey, I was just one of those kids, you know. Anyways, let's get into the video. Be sure to like, subscribe. Written yeah, just for a record on my album. And then once Sam caught wind of it, he was just like, I hear it, Lab, I'm in. At first, I was a bit like, nah, Hollywood, you know, everybody loves to say that. Yeah, we're going to use your track for the finale of a massive HBO show to see my personal music and the music that I was creating for myself become a musical piece in a HBO series is ticking a lot of boxes. This is definitely a dream come true. I'm taking it all for us. What I love about All For Us is that it's a rounding up of Rue's dream. And her dream is to be clean, to be the better version of herself. All For Us is that song that's like, I can do it, I know I can do it. Zendaya being as talented as she is, I was like, hell yeah, this girl could kill this record. I used to know a girl like that. Um, I ain't lived out over there in Dallas, Georgia, Harrison. Harrison High School, um, fuck Harrison High School. The black kids there was cool. The black kids, there was a lot of them were nice. It was some little low key. I gonna lie to y'all. It was some coon ass little kids bucking their eyes and shit. I don't know what black dude, the white women. Oh shit, Ooh, well, I want some of that, 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 that bunny meat. Like nigga, shut the fuck up. Stop fetishizing people. Weird ass. And the white, some of the white kids was cool. I got um a nigga wake up call. Thought I was cool with this white clique. What's up, my nigga? I said, the fuck? So who the fuck are you talking to? Yeah, suburban schools are very interesting. I graduated from mixed school. A little bit of everybody. Half white, half black. And everybody else sprinkled in. Not even sprinkled in. Yeah, a lot of Asians, a lot of Hispanics, a lot of some Russian people, um, Italians, and yeah, um, Harrison, they just, half of the teachers there was butthole races, fuck, um, O'Neal, whatever his fat weird ass is, fuck him, he goes suck a dick and die, big ass, dumb ass, bum ass, fuck nigga ass, I talked to him one time, this white kid said the N-word. He's like, well, <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you. And at that time, I didn't know what the fuck to do. I was a kid. I didn't, you know what I'm saying? I told my dad, said, my dad said, look, you're going to feel like, nigga, you're going to feel like people going to say shit, right? I'll be with you 100%. But how are we going to get this out? And does these kids even give a fuck? Like the kids that, that okay, so it was a Samoan black kid. He don't claim he black like that. So why you going to all... <sighs> My dad was like, don't let that shit get to you. Go there, get your education, and leave. Fuck them. Them, them motherfuckers going to say all types of shit. You're going to have to learn how to thug it out. You're going to have to learn how to... Don't let that shit affect you. Don't let that mess up your day. They going to say that shit? Expose them. If I, if I was the same mindset now, I... Say it again. Say it again, I'll expose your fucking ass. Like, I'll make sure your ass never be able to go to school. Every school you go to, they'll bully your ass. His fucking name was Billy. Bitch ass. I, think, I bet he a bum right now. I'm I'm sorry. That's the... Uh, it, it was just... That, that situation was so fucking annoying. You don't... I have to make a video about that. 
I'm gonna have to make a video about that. Let's get back into the video. The song is the idea that you're a dreamer and you believe that your dream is for, for everyone around you. It's actually a bit of that Drake started from the bottom, now we're here. Everyone's mm -hmm. coming up. And it's that mentality of just triumph with your people. But there's also a, a catch where every dreamer has a certain element of selfishness. When I started this track, I was sitting in the studio with my managers having a meeting while they were talking about marketing and all that random shit. I was like, oh, I just want to make a beat. So I just went off and started working on All For Us. He started calling the living room the home theater once we put the Sonos in. We have a dimmer so we can bring down the lights a little bit. <laughs> I need to feel. I like to see black love. Doesn't matter how the type of love it is. I love black love. I kind of had a trap rhythmic swing in my head. I don't love using trap sounds all the time, but what if I could use like a live drum kit and still keep that trap bounce? They're still doing this meeting and I, I don't know, I just heard a few words like, yeah, and the video's gonna look like this and then my mind just blanked out and I was like, okay, now I'm putting on the bass. It was just like this one, one finger bass note just rolling out. I'm originally from Jamaica and every bass line, they say you have to rub up the bass line. When you play a bass line, you gotta rub it up. You gotta make sure it, it swings your head. I started thinking of this choir. I just started kind of going, oh, oh, da 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 I was trying to sound like different people because a choir sounds best when there's different voices. I wanted it to feel like it was in like a cathedral or a church. One thing that really inspires me is like, uh, uh, what is it called? Oompa Loompa. Oh that song, yeah, from, from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, yeah. literally, <laughs> every time I'm working on a record, I'm trying to sound like these guys. From there, I was like, I need something that carries the high register of the record. And so I was like, why don't I sample myself? I sampled it on an MPC and just used it as a trigger. So I just put it on a pad. I'm using three elements and all of those three elements are already showing people what the rhythm or the swing of the record is. From there, um, it was just kind of adding extra mini elements and just stuff that helps develop the record. It's just like, what are the things that say that this record is you? I love like Super Nintendo glitch stuff. A little Mega Man has just ran through the middle of my track, just like shooting little uh, pistols. I didn't want to overdo it um, because I can really overdo it with 8 bit. You just keep thinking that the track's not done, so you add more sounds and then it just sounds like a mess. The hats kind of turn up a little later, so I wanted them to kind of um, just help elevate the record. It was just to add some room um, because a lot of the sounds were pretty produced and programmed. It was just the bass the drums and the, the, um, the chipmunks. So I just wanted to have some another element sitting over that. Mm. It's a, a clavinet, which is something that Stevie Wonder's used on many, many records. But I used it just as something just to help layer the record and, and just keep the rhythm rolling. I really love production that has elements of industrial sound. So I just kind of added this just to um, develop on the pre. I put some guitar in there, which I sat well far in the back. This was kind of inspired um, from like Kill Bill and a lot of those soundtracks. What I was really happy about is that Kill even Bill though was I wasn't there, movie. Zendaya was able to interpret every vibe and everything that I was doing. She could take on anything and figure out a way of, of expressing it in a way that that works for the record. Mama making ends meet. Making ends meet. 
Working like a slave. Mississippi, yeah, yeah. Daddy ain't at home, no. Father, father. Gotta be a man. Michael Corleone. She came in the studio, she heard the record, she really loved it. And she was like, I'm not gonna do what he does, I'm gonna do what I do. And I was like, that's the perfect way to approach a record. I remember speaking to you, uh, the Euphoria team, and they were like, Lab, you need to finish the record if we're gonna use it for the finale. And I was like, shit, I need a middle eight. Like, and I watched another episode of Euphoria and I, I was like, okay, I think I know what Zendaya needs to say or uh, Rue needs to say to round up what this record's about. And so I started working on this middle eight. But not gonna lie, people like Zendaya, Stormy Reed, um, Marlon Wayne, um, handful of actors, Michael B. Jordan, Draw Carmichael, Jordan Peele. No, I think so. Yeah, um, Lil Rel. It's like a handful of freaking art, like actors. I want to say thank you for because you made amazing freaking TV shows, movies. <sighs> the Carmichael show, that's, that was funny as hell. Um, everybody in that show, funny. Um, the Lil Rail show, that was funny in Chicago. That's funny because I went to Chicago. It was beautiful out there. Um, shake it up. Good luck, Charlie. Dog with a blog. Austin and Allie. I want to meet them in real life. All of them. The whole cast. Um, got some other shows. Wizards and Waverly Plays. It's that other show. Sunny and Chance or something like that. I forgot. Not Sunny and Chance and Meatballs. It's Sunny and Chance something else. Um, yeah. Man. It just seeing Zendaya do all this just make me reminisce about all the TV shows I watched growing up, how they influenced me, how I am today, what I learned from all these TV shows, from That's So Raven to Corey in the house. I'm the man. I remember, bro, I remember this one girl. <laughs> this one girl used to, she's like, I'm the man. But she used to be so funny with it. She used to make all these funny ass jokes. We used to like crack up and laugh. But we were just friends. We wasn't really friends. She was kind of annoying. But I mean, I mean, like she was like one of the, the kids, quote unquote, as they call bad in school. But a lot of those kids aren't bad in school. They just they misguided or they don't have a voice at home. If you look back in their home life, it's not the best. So because of that, they have to cope with doing bad stuff at school and trying to get attention. It was like a parenting. A lot of times, that's what I see. That's why I was friends with a lot of bad kids. But a lot of bad kids aren't bad. When they get older in high school, that's when they become bad. I'm talking about middle school. It was a jazz bass, my B3 Hammond, and a Celeste. And then I wanted to put the Celeste sound through the chorus and a few delays and stuff just to make it sound a bit wonky and a bit kind of psychedelic. The original record um, for All For Us had my family singing the chorus and singing the choir parts. They're also musicians and they tour with loads of artists and they put me to shame as a musician. I got them all in the studio and I was like, I would love to hear all these voices together. I wanted a choir rap. No one's really made a choir rap. Even a choir saying bitch, like no one's ever made a choir say bitch. So I was like, I'm gonna get them to say bitch and I'm gonna get them to like do this kind of flow that like maybe Kendrick would do. Sam comes to me and he says, Lab, I've got this crazy idea. I think I can make your genius a little bit more genius. I want to add an even bigger choir on the record and I also want to add a marching band. We're just going to get everyone in a room and just go ham. This crazy HBO choir just decided they were going to come and they just heard my version. They were just like, they just wrapped that shit up quickly. And that was like the moment I really noticed that the record was becoming even bigger than it, it itself. <gasps> The final bit that we worked on was just um, getting the marching band in.
so this is basically just the whole track as one piece. There's loads of little bits that um, I couldn't even get into, but um, I think that's what's great about a score is that you can introduce somebody to this motif or this energy um, and, and introduce them to almost the theme song of each character. I didn't know that my music could even translate to a world like that. So I'm um, definitely proud to like have my music involved in something like this. I'm pretty excited about everyone getting to see this extravaganza. Yeah, let's hear it. I relate to that character not me personally but I know I know a girl I used to date and she was going through a lot she had it all her family was rich but the money don't make you happy The money don't make you happy. Connections make you happy. Addictions is real. Mental illness is real. People need, I feel like old generation need to realize you can't paint, you can't, when it comes to parenting kids after a certain age, you have to have deep ass conversations. Like I'm dead serious. My dad had deep ass conversations with me. That's why I don't do stupid shit. Cause my dad just sat me down like, hey man, I know you want to fuck girls. I know you want to do this. I know you want to do that. But son, look at all the stuff you accomplished. Look at what you got to lose. All this you see in the background, I got all that. Me. Them lights you see, I got all that. This is all me. I be telling my friends and everybody else close to me. You have to build yourself. You have to invest in yourself. You you, you have to know yourself worth. You just have to set love certain. You have to know what you want to sacrifice. Play your cards right, basically. And that's what I did. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. That being said, be sure to like, subscribe. Shout out to Zendaya and all the famous black actors, all the famous white actors, all the famous actors in general that changed my life. From Disney Channel to Adult Swim to AMC, Sci-Fi, FX, uh, Cartoon Network, of course. You know, Channel 62, 63, 64. You know what I'm saying? And I think AMC was like 60, 66, 66. And I know Sci-Fi was like 74. I know FX was 43. Look, man, look, I grew up in that time, boys. If turn it on channel, then you already know what time it is, boy. You got the little the last button, you know what I'm saying? Glad, yeah, glad, man. Shoot. What y'all, man? I feel like I sound old as hell, but I'm not. I'm just literally 19. I just grew up with a box TV. I miss my box TV. You broke it. Got all the little stickers and shit on it on the side. That we used to place when his kids and try to scrape it off, but we never did. Be sure to like, subscribe. I'm reminiscing right now. I'm all good, everyone. Peace. Sorry, the poet.